When Ernst Hirsch comes to the Neumarkt public square and sees the restored Frauenkirche, he is reminded of the Dresden bombings 75 years ago. Everything was destroyed, and this was where most of the people were killed in the firestorm. Then, on the next day, the Dresden Frauenkirche collapsed. Yes, this square was reduced to rubble. On the evening of February 13, 1945, over the span of just 15 minutes, the Allied forces dropped bombs containing 900 tons of explosives on Dresden. During the next two days, three more attack waves followed. After that, the Baroque old town lay in ruins. At the time, Ernst Hirsch was nine years old. When the bombs were dropped on Dresden, he and his parents hid in a bomb shelter in the cellar of their house, seen here in the former Johann Georgen Alley. After the first attack, we left the apartment while everything was burning. I can still see it before my eyes, the flames creeping over the rooftops of neighboring houses. And that's what it looked like afterwards. That was my parents' apartment on the top there. That's what the ruins looked like. You can see the facade was still in good shape, but inside the building, everything was burned out. And that's what the whole wonderful street looked like. Ernst Hirsch and his parents were lucky. They were able to flee the city. As many as 25,000 people died during the air raids, many of them suffocated during the firestorms. In my eyes, this was a war crime. Many things happened on all sides, but this was an act of destruction directed at the civilian population. Ernst Hirsch started working as a cameraman in the 1950s. His nickname was the Eye of Dresden. He documented the reconstruction of the destroyed city, and he's been collecting photos and videos of Dresden since the 19th century for his film archives. Documentary film can be brutally honest. If you do not edit or change the footage, and I never did this, then for me it is the most impressive historical witness. Today, the rebuilt cityscape of Dresden betrays few signs of the destruction that took place here 75 years ago. The most wonderful thing of all is that the Dresden Frauenkirche has been restored. That is really the biggest miracle. And after the destruction I experienced in my childhood and youth, I never hoped or expected this to happen. I hope it will stay this way forever. The Dresden Frauenkirche is where Ernst Hirsch was baptized before the war. Today, he sees it as a symbol of peace. So was Dresden a legitimate target or a war crime? To talk about that, I have with us our correspondent Kate Brady. She's in Dresden, as well as with me in the studio, DW analyst John Berwick. Uh, welcome to both of you. If I may start with you, uh, John. Now, we heard the survivor in our report, Ernst Hirsch. He described what happened in Dresden today, 75 years ago, as a war crime. What is your assessment? It's a difficult question to answer simply and, uh, because there is controversy about it among historians and legal experts. The short answer, though, I think, is the consensus is by the standards of the time, it, uh, it was not a war crime. There was carpet bombing, uh, so-called strategic bombing, of uh, cities in order to demoralise the populations uh, done by both sides, and it was considered at the time legitimate. Of course, if it were to happen today, uh, it would definitely, certainly be regarded as a war crime. Turning to you now, uh, Kate, I mean, the far right in Germany um, is using these commemorations in Dresden in a very targeted and particular way. Tell us more about their perception and strategy. 
Well, I'm reading the far right scene and uh, neo Nazis here in Germany have been instrumentalizing these commemorations of the uh, Dresden bombing for many, many years now as part of their, their propaganda. And that all stems really from immediately after the raid 75 years ago when the Nazis, who were of course still in power at the time, really um, adjusted those numbers, quoting number of deaths and casualties, manipulated those figures, uh, saying that anywhere between 200,000 and half a million people perished in this tragic bombing. But, of course, nowadays we know that it was actually around 25,000 pe 25, people who perished in these, uh, in these air raids and the firestorm that took hold of Dresden uh, just behind me on the other side of, of the Elbe. And, of course, this year we are expecting to see the far right march again this weekend. Today uh, we are expecting to, be, to not really see anything of the far right scene, but on Saturday um, here in in Dresden, they're expected to hold a demonstration or a trauer march, as they call it, a sense of a march of mourning uh, to remember the victims. And so we're still seeing this instrument, instrumentalization continuing today, and we're expected to see people from not only Germany's far right scene, but uh, people are expected to, to uh, descend on Dresden from across Europe as well. And John, the narrative surrounding the destruction of Dresden has been instrumentalized not just now, as Kate was telling us, but right from the start. Tell us more about that. Well, Josef Goebbels, who was the Nazi propaganda minister uh, on the day after the first wave of bombing, uh, not only exaggerated the numbers, as Kate mentioned quite rightly, he also suggested that it was women, refugees and, and children who had been killed and that uh, Dresden uh, was uh, not militarily significant. It was a, that the aim of the targeting was, was against the cultural city of Dresden. Now, that's simply a lie. Of course, also, there was hatred as always and revenge, thoughts of revenge in, in the Allies and uh, they were targeting civilians as well, quite clearly. But Dresden had a very significant uh, military position at the time. The Red Army was advancing from uh, Russia, had already crossed into German territory, was surging towards Berlin, the capital. Germany had not yet uh, uh, surrendered and Dresden was a garrison city with uh, 20,000 troops there with armament factories and was also the main rail hub to the east supplying armaments to the to the to the to, to, the, to the German forces fighting the Russians so there were also military reasons for attacking it the problem is that this has been instrumentalized particularly by the right wing in Germany uh, and by Holocaust deniers such as David Irving um, the world over, who try to bring this often in connection with the Holocaust. They try to relativize the genocide against the Jews by exaggerating the death tolls and the suffering, as terrible as they were, in Dresden. Kate, you're standing in the heart of Dresden. What do people there feel about this debate and these conflicting narratives that we are getting? Well, Dresdeners today, Amrita, not only want to remember the victims of the air raid 75 years ago, but they also want to use the memorial and the commemorations today to take a look at, at exactly what's happening in the present and how we today, how society today can learn from the atrocities of the past. And I think that's reflected in the commemorations taking place today. If you look at the front of the programme for the service later today, today it simply says Nicht vergessen, meaning just to not forget. And I think that will be shown as well later this evening when um, tens, oh, around 10,000 people are due to unite around Dresden across both sides of the River Elbe behind me to unite and create a human chain. And that is supposed to create a signal of unity against all signs of hate, uh, hatred and violence. And of course, German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier will also be taking part. So the, the commemorations today are not only about remembering the past, but also reflecting on what can be learnt and applied to the present day. Kate Brady in Dresden and John Berwick, DW's analyst here, thank you both very much for your perspectives.